The grasslands are waking up. It is a vast land covered with short grass all the way to the horizon. Rain only falls for a short period in summer. The plants can't afford to grow any taller. The Mongolian gazelles are running across the steep. They run faster and faster until they are one with the wind. This is the Dornod Steep, a vast stretch in the far east of Mongolia, bordering China and Russia. Mongolian gazelles are wanderers who roam the grasslands all their lives. They never settle down. One can never predict where they are headed. One thing's for sure, where the Mongolian gazelles roam is where nature is at its most alive. It is March. This is when death looms over the grasslands. Many of the youngest and oldest gazelles perish. In winter, it is the bitter cold and hunger that gets them. However, early spring is when even more deaths occur. The gazelles, weakened by the long winter, find it difficult to last through early spring. A wolf appears amidst the grass. It devours a male gazelle and leaves as it came. Gazelles in spring are in a state of starvation. Although they make easy prey for the wolf, they don't make much of a meal. The low-lying grass welcomes the early spring. The arid conditions year-round mean that trees do not grow here. Below the grassland is an even more arid land called the Gobi. Although it is known as the Gobi Desert, it is different from most deserts. Gobi means coarse land where grass doesn't grow well. It is arid land with little patches of grass. The sandy desert is only a small part of it. Wild animals in the Gobi have developed high tolerance to aridity. The wild donkey is one of them. It drinks only once every two to three days and does not urinate often, conserving every drop of water. The wild donkey feeds on coarser grass compared to other animals and migrates around the arid land in herds. It is early spring, and sandstorms are raging across the Gobi. The sandstorms can build up to heights of 5,000 meters and travel long distances on the powerful westerlies. They can travel to Korea in just a day, and then move across the ocean to Japan, and even Hawaii. 
Gobi sandstorms make up part of the yellow dust that envelops Korea in spring. The Bactrian camel's nostrils close up automatically in sandstorms. Their double-layered eyelashes and hairs in their ears also help block sand. The Gobi is where Bactrian camels call home. They collect fats in the twin humps on their backs and can produce water from the humps. The Bactrian camel can last for a month without drinking. This coarse terrain is the only place on Earth where wild camels live. Even in the sandstorm, which shrouds everything, the animals are able to find grass. Although there seems to be nothing ahead, the nomads never lose their way. When the sandstorm has passed, the sky is suddenly covered with rain clouds. It is just before summer. The creatures of the desert do not miss the movement in the skies. The animals have already sensed the imminent rain. They wait in anticipation, as they would have to live on this water for the next year. Annual rainfall in this region is 50 millimeters, equivalent to a day's rainfall during Korea's rainy season. This is all the rain they see in a year. On the day of this precious shower, the arid Gobi lets out a sigh of relief. The desert rain has an astonishing effect it makes all the flowers bloom instantaneously. The flowers of various plants which have been waiting bloom all at once. Completely transforming the desert. The desert after the rain is filled with new life. The grasslands have also been watered. They've had a little more rain than in the desert to water the plants and land. Grass grows quickly after the rain has passed. The lush grassland stretches until the end of the horizon. It is a land of abundance for Mongolian gazelles. Only those who survive the winter get to taste the sprouts of spring.
Mongolian gazelles move in herds of several thousand. However, when summer comes, the herd will divide into smaller flocks of several dozen animals. This is because females about to give birth live apart from each other. Females with offspring cannot move long distances. When they crowd together, only the strong males would get to eat. So they separate for the time being and then regroup into the giant herd in autumn. They travel as far as Xinjiang, China and Kazakhstan in search of water and grassland. Borders only apply to humans. It is summer, and the Mongolian lark, a native bird of the Dornod grassland, surveys its surroundings. Bugs are the best food for its babies. Summer is the season for raising the young. The demoiselle crane is a migratory bird that visits the Dornode steep. After spending winter in India and Pakistan, they have arrived in this steep having crossed the Himalayas. They spend mating season here. There are no hiding places for the eggs in the steep. The demoiselle cranes stay together for life, once a male and female mate. They even share the task of brooding their precious eggs. This is the summer of abundance, when herbivores feed on lush greenery, and birds have healthy bugs to eat. Even the aggressive upland buzzard enjoys this peace. Suddenly the winds have picked up. Once again, summer showers fall on the grassland, and when it rains here, it pours. After the rain, the greenery has become even lusher. This is the height of summer. Female Mongolian gazelles are busy raising their young this season. The running female herd has baby gazelles mixed within. They hide their newborns in the tall grass. Newborn Mongolian gazelles stand up and take steps forward from the moment they are born. Then they start to run. Running is a natural instinct for Mongolian gazelles.
we find another young one hidden in the grass. This is a baby Demoiselle Crane, born just two days ago. As they don't have nests, baby cranes first learn the challenging move of standing upright on the ground. These young demoiselle cranes have grown quite a lot. The family busily scours the grassland, looking for food. The babies have to grow big and strong in summer, so as to fly over the Himalayas to their winter home before the cold comes. There are burrows here and there in the lowest area of the grasslands. They have been made by Brant's voles to live in. Brant's voles have one offspring a month from May to September. Their population grows substantially over the summer. Rodents in the grasslands are usually herbivores. The ground squirrel is one of them. Although they hibernate underground for most of the year, they come out in summer when grass is plentiful. Predators are everywhere for rodents. The upland buzzard is always looking for prey. It had four babies born in late spring. To keep her babies fed, the mother has to get busy hunting for food. Upland buzzard parents raise their offspring together. They take turns to fly out and find food. Brant's voles are one of their main preys. They have to be on constant alert when out of their burrows. Every moment is filled with danger. When they feel a predator coming, they send signals to warn other voles. Summer is when rodents are most abundant. This is also when the most rodents are caught by predators. Birds of prey also have offspring to feed. The upland buzzard heads back to the nest with a prey it caught. The babies have no other source of food than what is brought to them. Competition for food is fierce. If beaten out in this competition, chances are the bird will not grow properly.
among the rodents that come in summer. Only one in 10,000 survives to the next year. Most of them are eaten by predators. The ecology of the grassland is sustained by the rodents that convert grass to protein. Marmots are the best diggers in the steep. The comfy burrows dug by marmots are exploited by the Corsac foxes. They too have come out from their holes in summer. These are young cubs, about three months old. Corsac foxes live not in mountains, but in deserts and grasslands. The cubs are engrossed in play. However, the play helps them develop useful skills for hunting later in life. It may look like mating, but going on the other's back is a show of one's dominance. They fight to go on top of the others. It is to fix a hierarchy between them. The world outside the foxhole is full of mysteries for the curious cubs to explore. Corsac foxes have sharp ears and an exceptional sense of smell. The young cub remains fixed to the spot, smelling the scent of flowers. However, it is dangerous to let down one's guard. A golden eagle has shown up. The golden eagle can catch larger foxes, let alone small cubs. The most fearsome predator to the Corsac fox in the steep is the golden eagle. Fearful in front of predators and intimidating to its prey. Animals who have to hunt their food live between these two states. The mother Corsac fox who had ran from the eagle has caught a rat. She doesn't bring it to her young choosing to bury it instead. Mothers use this method to train her young to find their own prey. One Corsac cub has caught scent of the meat. However, it doesn't eat it on the spot. It takes the rodent and practices hunting. The smell attracts the other cubs. However, it has no intention of sharing. The fox cubs will soon have to hunt for themselves.
When the sun starts to set, the cubs return to their burrow. The mother lives in the burrow with her cubs for about a week. Then, she does not go inside anymore. She only checks to see that her cubs are okay from time to time. She stays on the hill, watching the hole, and falls asleep there. The marmot is a native of the grassland. It stands against wind blowing from far away. When fully grown, it becomes twice as big as a rabbit. It is a rare giant rodent. These marmots are out to find food. Usually they are hiding in their burrows underground. The world outside is filled with predators out to get them. People are one of them. There are things one must prepare for a marmot hunt. White clothes that stand out in the scenery and hats that look like animals. The hunter holds a white horsetail or an accessory made of yak fur. When he swishes the tail, marmots think he is an animal. The marmot peeks out, wondering what it could be. Unable to stop its curiosity, it's ventured out of the burrow. Marmots are full of curiosity, and hunters use camouflage to take advantage of it. After drawing the marmot out slowly, an accurate shot is all you need to catch it. The marmot is brought home and cooked. After removing the intestines, the marmot is cooked whole to make bodok. It is cooked together with vegetables using hot stones. After closing all gaps by tying with a wire to prevent heat from escaping, the fur is burnt away. Finally, the bodok, made from marmot, is done. First, they pour out the greasy broth and take turns to drink from it. <laughs> it is a great Mongolian delicacy. Marmots feed on healthy grass in the steep. They become a precious source of protein for all living creatures in the steep. The Gobi is in the height of summer. It gets as hot as 50 degrees Celsius. The land is scorching hot without a spot of shade. The Gobi is a land of grass, rock, and sand.
The Hongorin Els is a long stretch of sand dunes. The sand particles blown by the wind have formed hills as high as 200 meters. The sand particles fly into each other, making strange sounds. This is why the Mongolians call these dunes the singing sand. The desert moves very slowly, according to the push of the wind. The long curves of the sand dunes are marks of the long history of the desert. The plants grow stout and short, making their stems as tough as trees. There are plants growing even in this arid land, allowing for herbivores to survive. Summer is breeding season for wild donkeys, too. This is when they mate and raise their offspring. They live in small flocks now and regroup into a large herd in winter. It is a tough animal that has made this extremely arid land its main habitat. This is why the wild donkey struts with magnificent pride. People have called it the most arrogant beast. On the other hand, there is the Bactrian camel, known as the most docile. It has been used as a beast of burden for ages. It has humps in which fats are stored, enabling it to survive even when food becomes scarce. Its dexterous lips are able to remove thorns from the plants it eats. Its hooves have been optimized for the desert. The cloven hoof is as flat as a saucer, keeping it from sinking into the sand. No other animal can travel as far across the desert as the Bactrian camel. The camel is throwing up. Today is a terrible day for camels. The nomads are shearing their fur before they shed it naturally in summer. The camel has to be tied up throughout this ordeal. From milk to leather to fur, the camel gives every part of its body to the nomads. People use camel fur as fibers to make ropes, clothing and carpets. The nomad has brought his flock to the spring. The animals have been going without water for a long time and drink an astonishing amount. The spring is one of the rare water sources here. As always, the nomad feeds his flock first, then takes water for himself. The sun sets, and another group of visitors have arrived at the spring. Wild donkeys are able to smell water from far away. With their remarkable water-seeking abilities, they even dig wells for themselves. The humans then make use of these springs too. After hydrating at the long-awaited spring,
they return into the dust clouds. There are rock hills strewn across the sandy Gobi. They have been carved by wind over millennia. Although the land is barren, it is a great mating ground for birds. Eagles are the greatest birds of prey in the Gobi. They are birds of prey with wingspans up to three meters long and can weigh up to 10 kilograms. This nest has been built on a rocky cliff. Eagles return to the same nest to breed each year, making repairs here and there. It lays a single egg and raises the one offspring. All eagles are the sole offspring from a single nest. However, the mother and child go separate ways in winter. This is because eaglets that do not mate spend the winter in the warm south. The slopes of the rocky hills are home to the Gobi Argali. Gobi Argali are large even among wild sheep. They can live without drinking on the little moisture present in their food. Their horns keep growing with age, reaching up to 160 centimeters. Gobi Argali live in complete segregation between sexes. All of them have patchy fur right now. They are shedding into the summer coat. Summer is here for the Gobi Argali living in the rock hills. Summer in the grassland is when horses grow the fastest. Mongolians pick the fastest among them and ride them for hours. These horses are being prepared for a race between young riders. July is when the Mongolian festival of Nadam is held. The horses are given a rest. Trotting in large circles, both rider and horse cool down. The riders are usually younger than 10. The lighter you are, the better chance you have at winning. Horses raised by nomads live in a state close to nature. However, they are different from real wild horses. There are real wild horses in Mongolia. This is Privalsky's horse with a powerful mane. It was named after the Russian zoologist who discovered the horse in the 19th century. They have been restored once after going extinct in the wild. This was done in 1992 using a specimen in a European zoo. These horses most resemble those in prehistoric cave paintings.
It is already autumn here in August. Nomads are busy herding their horses. The horses have grown big and strong in the abundance of summer. The nomads plan to choose a horse to be trained today. The horse has to be trained to be used as a steed. The orga has to be stretched and looped over the horse's head swiftly. They have chosen a strong horse, about three years old. The horse has been raised in semi-wilderness. It does not give in easily. A few strong men have to work together in the taming of the steed. When they have subdued it, it is fixed with a bit. The animal is no longer free. Now, the actual training begins. The horse leaps about, alarmed. This is how training a horse always begins. The expert who's been watching now takes control. The trained horse will now keep by the nomad side for the rest of its life as a faithful steed. The wind is getting chilly in the grasslands. The autumn is reaching its peak. October is when the Mongolian gazelles regroup to form a large herd. The males and females have gathered for mating season. Although herds used to number 20,000, numbers have dwindled to just several thousand. The white-naped cranes are heading south for the winter. The Dornod Steep is where they take a short break. They will have to fly as far as Korea and Japan eventually. It is crucial to take breaks in between. The yellow-headed cranes are babies born this year. After the hard maiden voyage, they will become adults. The flock of white-naped cranes fly off once more. Their migration to warmer places is a sure sign of the coming winter. Where the grasslands end is where the forest begins. It is at the foot of the Kenti Mountains in northeast Mongolia. It is a thick forest of conifers. At the other end of this forest is Siberia.
An eagle is flying overhead. Where the grass has sunken, we find traces of blood. Something must have happened. A calf lies dead and abandoned on the ground. It must have been killed by a wolf. Smaller birds, like crows, are the first to discover dead animals. A rough-legged hawk joins in. Although it is small for a bird of prey, the rough-legged hawk is known for its aggressiveness. After surveying its meal, it takes the best spot to feast from. However, the smaller birds are hungry and do not give in. As it is not much bigger in size, the rough-legged hawk is pushed away by the smaller birds. However, there is another set of eyes on the meat. It belongs to a wolf. It is rare for wolves to be seen in daytime. Being all by itself, it must be a lone wolf. Perhaps it has been chased away from the pack by its leader. Perhaps it was the former leader. It has its tail between its legs, a sign of extreme nervousness. It is startled even by small noises and surveys the surroundings. This is typical behavior for a lone wolf. Although it had caught the calf itself, the situation has changed. The wolf hesitates, unable to approach. Instead, it goes further away. Wolves urinate to mark their territory. It also leaves its scent by rubbing its feet on the ground. This is a sign to other wolves. It's short venture in broad daylight. goes to waste, as the lone wolf has no backup. It retreats once more into the forest of Kenti. The winds have become even colder. They are followed by sudden snow. Winter always strikes unexpectedly.
The cold Siberian winds bring on the long winter. The grass of Dornod is covered by snow. Mongolian gazelles, wanderers of the steeps, run across the snow. Once again, they have to prepare for the harshest season in their giant herds. From now on, the only goal is survival. To triumph over the cold and hunger, They will wander the grasslands in search of food, in search of short reprieve from the wind. The Mongolian gazelles cautiously test the frozen steeps. Mm -hmm. 